Itan, guys, welcome back. Second episode, myth busting. Second episode on the topic of a guru, leaving the guru. Why do people leave the guru? And why guru is important? Like I said in the first episode about guru, which was the second episode, uh, so that would be the third one. Um, I don't feel it is possible to free yourself from your mind, from your attachments without the happening of guru in your life, without guru in your life. And I'll share why in this video. Before that, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. That might be a shorter video. Why it's not possible? So I'll, I'll share with you the understanding I have, the clarity I have about the whole uh, process. As a child, it starts as a child. Actually, in the biomemory itself, we carry the powerless cognitions, but they will take different forms in our life depending on the childhood we have. So from previous life, biomemory means from previous lives or karmas, you will bring the powerless cognition biomemory, but these, this biomemory will take a specific shape in this life depending on the kind of life you had as a child. As a child, body is not necessarily mature, we are exploring the body, mind is also not mature, so in many situations the child will, can, not will, he can decide to cherish powerlessness because he cannot relate from the mental uh, dimension and the physical dimension with full maturity with his environment. In other dimensions he is very much powerful in terms of feeling the energies and emotions and grasping the vibes, child would be very good for that. His third eye will be active. His intuition and his feeling connected will be very high. But mind and body might not be as powerful. So a child can decide to cherish powerlessness. When he starts to cherish powerlessness, he builds up his own conclusions of why. And Swamji used to give, and when I did Inner Awakening, uh, he used to say, for example, um, if a child goes outside and he jumps in the puddle, he's so happy, he just jumps, 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 he's enjoying, he's blissful, suddenly his mother snatches him, brings him in the house, slaps him, and he doesn't understand what's going on. He is having his nervous system is on fire, he's having pain, he doesn't understand why mother is behaving that way, he doesn't understand the context from which she's coming, about catching cold perhaps, or dirtying the clothes, or whatever the context may be, he doesn't fully grasp why the mother responds like that. He just knows that I was blissful and this shluba shluba came and, and she destroyed my bliss and I don't like her. And at that moment, because children are very intense, you, will, you might decide, you, you will most likely hate your mother because of the way she responded to you and how she robbed you from the bliss you were in. Um, and then you will start to develop your own conclusions with the mind you have as a child, with the understanding of the world that you have, you will make your own conclusions. And these conclusions, we get frozen into them. These conclusions are like the first conclusions we have about life, the first negative conclusions especially, and, and they will become the pillar of the identity that we create for ourselves. So then later on in life, we do have a certain, we engage with the world in certain ways, but these ways are determined by the kind of pillars you created for yourself as a child. And you have to dismantle these pillars in order to re-experience life properly. Because keeping in mind that the child did not have a mature body nor a mature mind when he made these conclusions. So these conclusions are most of the time not in tune with reality at all. And that is why the disconnect, that is why the powerlessness. Removing the pillars of your identity or we should removing the pillars of your mind or of your ego cannot be done by you because you created it like that to protect you from what you understand of life. So it is you who created that to protect you from what you consider as dangerous in life or threatening in life. So how can you destroy your own pillars if you believe that you can be threatened? As long as the cognition that you, the fear of death is there, that you can be threatened in any shape or form, you will never go and destroy the pillar. That's like, <laughs> that's, that doesn't make sense. 
It's like somebody who builds his own castle to protect himself and then he starts to destroy the pillar of his castle. Who does that? Nobody does that. The very purpose of the castle is to protect yourself. So why would you destroy the foundation and destroy the castle which is protecting you? So mind cannot dismantle mind. Why Guru? Because Guru, Guru is the embodiment of somebody who has gone beyond mind. He has been guided and been blessed and been initiated and and experience, was given the experience of beyond mind and he successfully established himself in that. He removed his pillars, he re-experienced his consciousness to its full potential and then he becomes the embodiment of the possibility of going beyond the mind. So the Guru will give you the courage, the guidance, the strength to remove the pillars which, uh, which are responsible for the powerlessness that you experience. But without the presence and the inspiration and the powerfulness, the initiation, the presence of Guru in your life, there's no way you're going to have the courage to remove these pillars unless you're suicidal, which doesn't make sense in the identity level. In the identity level, we are never suicidal. We might be suicidal in the outer identity level, but in our identity level, we are never suicidal because we never want to drop the ego because we truly believe that the fear of death that we can, that our existence is threatened. We believe it's real, even though it's not ultimately. And that is why we, that's what we seek, the space of Paramashivoham, where you are the super consciousness and there's nothing that can threaten you. Threaten you. Uh, but initially we don't feel like that. So that is why Guru is there. Without Guru, you will not have the role model, you will not have the right cognitions, and you will not have the right inspiration and courage to break these pillars, to reinvent yourself. So that is why Master is very important, Guru is very important, and that is why Swamiji is here. He's here to show us that. And if you connect to him, then if you connect to him for other reasons than that, I don't think the connection will be lasting. Because end of the day, no matter how intense you are, you have to, you know, remove these pillars. You have to decide to drop these cognitions, have the cognitive shift, and embody, be, enter in oneness with Paramashiva, with Swamiji, with the Guru, who is the embodiment of Paramashiva in one's life. In the Kamika Agama, the, some scriptural references say that Shiva says that he comes in the life of a sincere seeker in the form of Guru. So when you seek sincerely, you will manifest Guru. Once you manifest Guru, you are blessed. Continue to walk on that path. Never abuse guru-disciple relationship. It is in your benefit for you to experience your true nature. So with this, I'll see you guys in another episode. Nityandam.